Hey guys, in this video, we're talking about the business side of ceramic coatings, and we're taking this disgusting, muddy farm truck all the way, not only totally detailed, but also we're slapping a ceramic coating on this thing outside in the driveway, not even in the garage, because it literally wouldn't fit in the garage. So this is going to be a great video all around. Now, a couple things. Number one, if you guys like this style of video that I've been doing recently, where we take this really disgusting car, or maybe just a full detail, and rather than talking about the intricacies of the detail and the products themselves, we really highlight the business side of things. Will you just go in the comments below right now and just say, yes, keep going so that I know that you guys like this style of video where you not only get to see the whole detailing process, but you also like the fact that the voiceover is all business stuff. That would help me out a ton. Now let's set up the context for this detail. Number one, this client owns an interior design slash building firm. It's a really high end firm in the or company in the city that I live in, which is a suburb right outside of uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And this particular company only services like high end and builds high end homes and designs high end homes. And so it's one of those like minimum, you know, million or two million dollar kind of buy in as far as homes that they will uh, actually do for their clients. And so um, this particular client has a great, uh, you know, kind of healthy amount of disposable income. And I talk about, of course, targeting clients in the detailing world who have healthy amounts of disposable income. And hopefully you guys can maybe hear what I am saying and not what I'm not saying, because of course that's not like, I don't, that's not like a profiling sort of thing. That's just like a common sense sort of thing. It's kind of like, uh, you know, people who are going to shop at Juicy Couture, you know, there's a certain type of person that is targeted in their marketing because they sell more expensive things. Uh, in the auto detailing service industry, one of the biggest issues that people have is going to be negotiating on price and of course selling the value of your services to a customer. And so in my decade or 10 years uh, of running my mobile auto detailing business, and of course now it's more stationary in my garage that I've been building out, but in my 10 years of running my auto detailing business, what I found is those two problems, the negotiating price problem and the selling your value problem, in many ways are self-correcting problems when you target the right customer. And so in a lot of my videos, I talk about targeting customers customers that have a healthy disposable income. Most of my customers are in uh, the entrepreneurial world. They run successful businesses. I have a lot of medical professionals who are also my clients, uh, a lot of real estate people. And this is just one of those things where it makes it easier on both people's ends. I'm not having to over communicate. They're not having to uh, be sold by me. And uh, it just makes a lot of sense for me to target this kind of person. Now, all of that being said, uh, while this is the type of client I'm detailing for, this is not his uh, first daily driver truck. This is a farm truck, and he actually approached me, um, and like I said, guys, I've built a business the last 10 years, and so in many ways, people in uh, our city tend to uh, contact me maybe before other people just because of my uh, social media you know, following or the fact that I've built a reputation the last 10 years, and so one of the things that I like to encourage guys with when they're starting out is if you stay consistent, that alone is going to skyrocket you if for no other reason because most other people give up and you will become the person that people default to contacting first and they literally associate the word detailing with you in their mind and you never have any lack of customers when you're in that space. Now, the way my customer approached me here was super simple and straightforward. He said, listen, this is a uh, farm truck that I just bought and it's super muddy, super dirty. And I was like, hey, all the more, you know, better because it's going to make a great video, like no problem bringing it to me muddy. Uh, but he said, it's not going to be my daily driver, but it is going to be what I drive on the farm. And basically I am interested in asking about ceramic coatings because I hear that they make it easier to wash the car. I want something on the vehicle that's going to make the washing process easy. And of course, the added benefit is it's going to keep the car in fantastic condition. Well, of course, that is where I swoop in as the auto detailer, you know, kind of expert in that particular context and conversation. And I kind of put my teaching hat on and explain a few things. One of the things I always explain to customers, and this is a very important conversation to have with you guys as you're listening and watching this video, because as you get into ceramic coatings, which inevitably you're going to want to do just because not only is the industry moving that way and it's kind of foolish to put off something that is inevitably happening, but secondly, there's a huge profitability kind of curve that you can tap into when it comes to ceramic coatings. And so 
that is going to be something that you eventually will want to get into even if it's not something you're doing right now. And so this conversation about how to talk with customers regarding ceramic coatings is extremely important and that's what I want to take up this first part of the video with here. One of the things that you're going to notice all the time is when people approach you to talk about ceramic coatings, they have certain preconceived notions in their head that they heard from just like old, you know, wives tales, they're through the grapevine, conventional wisdom, all of these certain things that they will say about ceramic coatings, hey, I heard this, I heard this, I heard this. More than likely they're conflating ceramic coatings with things like paint protection films and other things in the industry that exist and they don't know how to separate it out or isolate it because obviously they are not an expert in detailing so the best they can do is tell you what they know. One of the most common things that people uh, kind of make remarks about when it comes to ceramic coatings is the washing stage. They say, hey, I know and I've heard that a ceramic coating will make washing so easy that in many ways I can just spray the truck off with a pressure washer and I barely even have to wash the car anymore. That's why I want the ceramic coating on. This is my cue and kind of a red flag or like a ding, ding, ding moment where I can come in and say, okay, let me take the conversation back, give you a little bit of context to what you should expect with a ceramic coating by really just telling you the nature of what it is, and it's going to help you put in and kind of conceptualize, put in your head in probably a bit more organized way, exactly how to set your expectations when it comes to things like ceramics. So in this particular context, what ended up happening is I said, well, listen, let me tell you about what a ceramic is. A great way to think about it, and this is exactly what I say to customers, by the way, a lot of you guys are going to hear me and say, hey, you're oversimplifying it. And it's like, yes, exactly. I am on purpose. I'm, I'm purposefully oversimplifying the ceramic coating conversation because, and this is something I teach in my online course a ton, but uh, the, the lower you can make the barrier of entry to your customer, especially to the answers they want, the more you are going to convert customers and people uh, by and large like simplicity. And so I'll say, listen, a great way to think about a ceramic coating is this. It's kind of like a tiny, tiny, really thin layer of glass that sits on top of your paint and acts as a tiny, tiny, tiny layer of glass protection against all the things that you can expect it would protect against. So not only things like rain, snow, and bugs, but also, of course, you know, when you're on the highway and you're getting, you know, you're hitting things at 70 miles an hour, there will be a certain layer of protection that comes with that. Why you're talking about how easy it is to uh, wash a car with a ceramic is because in a lot of ways, when you apply ceramic on top of car paint, the ceramic material or the ceramic substance is actually more hydrophobic or it repels water at an even greater degree than the paint itself or the clear coat itself does. And so while yes, you are right in some aspects of yes, it does make car washing much easier, it is important for me to under or for me to explain to you the limitations of a ceramic coating because it's not all all peaches and cream just because you're putting the ceramic coating on top of it. So do you have a couple minutes for me to walk through exactly what those are and it's really pretty straightforward and probably some things that you could have already guessed. That's how I like to talk to my customers because it number one simplifies things into language that they understand. In a lot of ways, I use different analogies and metaphors in a conversation like this because people all can relate to certain things. And so if you can take those things that everyone relates to and apply it to this situation, you give them a certain context to receive the information that you're trying to explain to them. And so it just makes them feel much more comfortable with you. It makes things much easier to uh, understand at the end of the day. And so as I go into the limitations of a ceramic coating, there are certain key limitations I always like to highlight when I'm dealing with customers, especially, and this is important, especially when the customer comes in with a preconceived notion of how ceramic coatings work. When people do that, it is absolutely imperative. It is your cue to take it on yourself to overemphasize the limitations that they are not aware of. Whether the customer knows it or not, if they come in with all of these preconceived notions of the advantages that a ceramic coating has, they have this really high expectation that they might not even have the language to assign to it, to communicate to you, to, to make sure you know that's where their expect expectations are. And this is only something I've learned based off of experience in speaking with people after pe person after person after person in my detailing business, as well as say my online business. When people come in with these preconceived notions telling you, somebody who's much more familiar with ceramic coatings about how ceramic coatings work, that is your cue to come in and be very clear about the limitations surrounding a product like this, okay? Because you're going to need to bring their expectations down to a certain level. 
One of the things I always make very clear is that ceramic coatings could be thought of like carpet protection. When I put a carpet protect a protection or a protective carpet barrier layer, Scotch Guard, Smart Fabric, whatever product I'm using, onto car carpet, I explain to people that this does not prevent the carpet from getting dirty. It only makes the dirt easier to clean and keeps my job really easy in my effort to keep the carpet in perfect condition. The dirt will still stick to the carpet. It will still get on the carpet. The dirt from the bottom of your shoes that you're getting in and out of your cars with will still get on the carpet. But when I go to detail the carpet, it will be restored virtually to that 100% perfection sort of standard. This is the way to think about ceramic coatings. Yes, just like a fabric coating, the cleaning process itself becomes quicker and easier. Absolutely. Yes, the final result after you get done cleaning it will be that, you know, 100% kind of perfect condition that you're wanting to keep your car in. However, does that keep dirt from getting on the car in the first place? No, it doesn't. Therefore, is it still necessary to clean the car, to wash the car in some sort of a standard way? Yes, it is. This is a point that needs to be emphasized. I'm telling you from a lot of experience in talking to a lot of people. People literally have this idea that when you apply a ceramic to a car, it's like putting on like some sort of like 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 Superman's throw up or something. It's like like somehow it will make it invincible against all things and your car is the Batmobile and you can just start blowing up buildings with it. It's like that is not what is going to happen and that is the first point that is really important to make clear. There is still damage that might occur, but that's actually point two, so it's a good segue. The second thing I always like to make extremely clear is this. Customer A, this ceramic coating is not going to create an invincible layer of protection on your car that is going to protect against all things the world has to offer. The main things that a ceramic coating is are designed to do or is designed to do is protect the underlying clear coat, protect ultimately the underlying paint from things like oxidation, natural wear and tear, losing its uh, you know that original depth of shine and luster. And then thirdly, it is going to make main maintenancing it much, much easier. But the proper way to conceptualize a ceramic is a sacrificial layer of protection. This is a great phrase that I encourage you guys to steal from me, okay? A sacrificial barrier, a sacrificial layer of protection. In other words, the coating itself is designed over time to actually degrade and need to be replaced. And I don't know why this is not more of a conversation in the detailing world. The coating will degrade, and this is actually a functional, it's, it's, it's part of the functionality of the coating itself. It is not made to live forever. In the same way, when you coat your carpets with a layer of protection, the layer of protection is designed to take the brunt of the dirt or the brunt of all the things, okay? Now, what are the major things that a ceramic coating, no matter how great they are, generally speaking, do not protect at a high level against? It's important to name those things. The first and foremost thing that is most important to, to, to explain is uh, the rock chips that will inevitably incur on paint that on a car or a truck that is driven on particularly the highway or the interstate, or the interstate on a daily basis or a uh, you know weekly basis. You cannot avoid this. This tiny little thin layer of glass in most cases that represents represent a ceramic coating is not going to protect against rock chips, okay? I know some people will argue with that and they'll say, well, my coatings do. My coatings absolutely do. And it's like, I understand that I'm being a little dramatic and a little black and white in the way I'm talking right now. The reason I'm doing that is just because in a very general sense, ceramic coatings do not do that at any sort of high level or at least at a high enough level to actually make a note of. That is going to be reserved for something like a paint protection film also known as a clear brawl, or you could just call it saran wrap for your car. <laughs> That's like uh, the most, probably the most redneck way to say it, okay? So that being said, I like to highlight the fact that that is not going to, uh, that the coating is not going to protect against that. In the same way, I explain to my customer, particularly when they bring up this whole argument of this is going to make washing a piece of cake, and the reason why I bring this up is because I try to explain the, ne the necessity of washing is a ceramic coating while it is protecting the clear coat, in some ways mimics the clear coat. 
And in many ways, it mimics the clear coat in the way it is damaged. So when bugs, tree sap, water spots, or these things sit on top of the coating, it will inevitably incur some damage when those things etch into the coating in the same way that they etch into clear coat or the same way that brake dust corrodes into the, uh, al the alloy wheels, whatever it is. This can be etched, it can be damaged if it is not properly maintained, which then brings you into the conversation of maintaining the ceramic coating, which I think is overcomplicated in the detailing world, to be totally honest. I think um, co ceramic coating maintenance is actually far simpler and people probably overcomplicate it because someone is probably at the end of that register making more money, but that's just my cynical brain talking. Um, so my point is these things are incredibly important to point out to the customer because your job is to assume that they don't know these things. I can tell you that one of the worst mistakes you can make as an auto detailer who is trying to build a successful business and not just build your detailing ego, but build a successful business. It is always best to default when you've never spoken with the customer before. It is best to default. They do not understand understand the nature of the beast. And it is your job to take that responsibility in some ways, self-imposed responsibility upon yourself to explain these things to them. Now, one of the things you guys hear me return to a lot of times in my videos is the type of customer that I target and the type of customer I encourage other people who are beginning their auto detailing businesses to target. The conversation will get deeper in just a second, but the point that I'm making here is that this particular customer, because they match this sort of, um, you know, a certain level of disposable income, just full disclosure, you know, they, they have the money to pay for detailing. Secondly, they value the truck enough to put a ceramic coating on it. This is like handing, giving candy, or taking, what's the phrase? That's not handing candy to a baby. It's taking candy from a baby. This is like taking candy from a baby. And I don't know why it's not more of a conversation in the detailing world, but I always go back to maintenance clients because the way I built a successful detailing business was through my building of maintenance clients, meaning my building of regular clientele, because what it allowed me to do was build a baseline foundational monthly, bi-monthly, and annual revenue stream that I could not only count on, but predict and extrapolate into the future and kind of uh, make projections on. But it also allowed me to leverage my time in a way where I could build my business in other ways using other strategies that ended up being much more productive because once again, what was producing the, bulk, the bulk of my revenue in my business was not necessarily taking the bulk of my time. That was the key that ended up changing things for me in detailing. But the point I'm getting at here as I'm talking in circles is because this person was willing and actually approached me about putting this coating on their vehicle, they are also probably the type of customer who will pay for the extra maintenance that it's going to take to maintain the coating. This is an extremely important point. And while it's ironic because probably the default setting or the default like uh, answer to what I'm about to say is, yeah, Luke, of course that's true. That's very simple. It's sometimes the simplest things in building your business that people actually don't implement that we all kind of understand intuitively is going to be the most effective thing. And so in saying that, my point here is, it is always easier to build more business with customers with whom you have already done business rather than finding new customers to do new business with them. And yet, most detailers focus in my time getting, you know, the, the awesome opportunity to train a lot of young detailers and train them particularly in the business section of building uh, their, their detailing business. I found that almost every time, they are more concerned and spend more time trying to find new customers than they do recurring customers, or they're trying to get new revenue instead of create recurring revenue. And this is something I just don't, I don't understand it. I don't know why this has been such the default setting. It, I think sometimes we get so caught up in just the way things have always been. And the people who we see running detailing businesses, we just say, well, that's just the way they do it. And that's the way it's always been done. So we just kind of don't question it maybe, but I think that should be questioned because when you are dealing with somebody who's approaching you to put a ceramic coating on their vehicle like this situation, and they're willing to pay the price in order to do that, they are also the perfect candidate 
to put on a maintenance list where you can continue to service the vehicle, protect the ceramic coating, because this person already checked all of the difficult boxes to check on the front end. And so the point here could be summed up into one sentence in that in many ways, ceramic coating clients lead to maintenance detailing clients. And all the better for you because this is the kind of vehicle that not only is it seen on a regular basis, assuming they're a maintenance client, but because it's coated in a ceramic, it's even easier to maintenance than that which is not. It's even easier to wash, just to uh, kind of bring in our previous conversation. It's even easier on you. The other thing to note about this is that you have an inevitable advantage here with your customer because because the customer doesn't understand the nature of the beast or the nature of what to expect fully like you do in the detailing world with all of these different avenues, talking about ceramics and what it takes to wash and what it takes to detail and all those things, not only is this a win-win for me and my customer right here because he brought the truck so muddy, so disgusting that with me even doing any sort of detailing, it's going to look better. But with me applying a ceramic coating, the before and after is going to be so dramatic in this scenario that he's going to, you know, just wet his pants. You know, it's going to be awesome. Um, but apart from that, with me maintaining a ceramic coating like in this scenario and maintaining a truck that is coated, I am able to consistently produce consistent amazing results. That's a little redundant, but it's probably the best way to say it. I'm able to consistently produce consistent results. And the customer is going to continue to get this truck muddy, continue to get it dirty, but because it's seen on a regular basis, the ceramic coating is going to remain intact and it's going to be easy for me to detail. And so each time the before and after is going to look really, really dramatic, not necessarily from my doing, but more from the coatings doing, from the products I'm using, uh, from the strategy, from the approach here. And this is where you're just kind of thinking outside the box. I think it's kind of an unspoken truth people are not talking about. When you are able to continuously restore this muddy truck back to that original amazing condition, your customer looks at you as a superhero. And even, you, don't, you don't have to be, the point is you don't have to be the best detailer in the world to do that. In fact, you don't even have to be the one who applies the ceramic coating in the first place. There are plenty of people I detail for uh, who, who have ceramic coated vehicles that I did not apply. I just maintenance it. In fact, I posted a video about uh, a maintenance client I have that uh, owns an Aston Martin that I see on a regular basis. And that is an Aston Martin that is coated in not only a paint protection film on certain areas, but also a ceramic coating of which neither I actually applied. I'm just the one maintaining them. Now, one of the really great things that you can take advantage of is very simply, and this is probably going to depend on where you live, but while I've talked about the type of customer that's really uh, probably attractive to a uh, target for this kind of service, I think another conversation is when do you hyper-focus in targeting these people uh, for these ceramic coatings? What is the season in which you might want to do something like this? What I've found is, and this is probably, again, pretty intuitive, right before winter, right after winter, and right before summer is a fantastic time to target this kind of clientele in order to apply something like a ceramic to their vehicle. And just as a side note, I posted a video uh, not too long ago showing a spray ceramic from the last coat that I applied to a vehicle that I charged basically like about 45% of what I would charge for a traditional ceramic in order to apply that. And if you are not super experienced with ceramics or you just want to become super experienced, of course, you, but you're not uh, super comfortable applying them to customers' cars yet as you're still uh, practicing, this is one of those things that you can do as a sort of, not shortcut, but just a sort of learning experience. A spray ceramic product is a fantastic product to use that will basically give you absolutely no risk. Like that, that's the point. And I don't, you know, I'm not a, you know, disclaimer Probably most people can screw up something with pretty much anything, but you will probably not screw it up with a spray ceramic. That being said, right before winter, right after winter, and right before summer are the key times in my experience that people are very likely to not only ask questions about ceramic coatings, but also take you up on your offering them. 
Now I'm gonna give you guys a little golden nugget here that has worked for me in the past uh, when I particularly was trying to build this kind of ceramic coating aspect of the business. Um, and I was trying to kind of convince people, and this was honestly a couple of years ago when truth be told, ceramic coatings weren't exactly the most popular thing like they are now in the detailing world. Like the word ceramic has become very common. Um, and that's actually relatively recent in my opinion. Now, that being said, you can very, people love visual appeal. People love uh, visual examples of what they can expect to see on their vehicles. They like, they like examples, right? It's why analogies and metaphors speak to us because it's kind of like this um, example of some sort of more uh, like larger and more ambiguous principle. And when you can make like physical things like props that people can actually sink their teeth into and see in real life, it ends up helping you kind of sell things a little bit better. Now, what I'm getting at here is one of the things that you can do that I've seen other people do is number one, you can create a tiny, tiny little video of one half of a windshield or one half of a part of the paint that's particularly pronounced and easy to see. And you can, uh, again, see kind of the hydrophobic properties of the nature of the ceramic. You can coat one half in the ceramic, one half not in the ceramic, throw some really dirty, like muddy water onto it, watch the muddy water drip and s totally run off of that one side while it kind of sticks to the other side. The reason I say windshield is because with glass, it's really easy to see. Uh, it makes it very pronounced, the uh, kind of hydrophobic properties of the any particular coating you're using. But you could also essentially get a clear mason jar, just a glass mason jar. Take your ceramic coating applicator and coat from the middle interior part of the jar all the way up to the top. Let that cure, add another little layer and add even a third layer if you wanted to separated by like, you know, 24 hours. I think it's probably the best thing to do when you're doing it in this kind of uh, manner. And what you can do essentially is fill that mason jar full of dirty water and only fill it about halfway full. And you just create like this like muddy water solution, more or less, put the lid on the mason jar and you can shake that up, of course, after the coating has cured on its side and you can see the side that, of course, is coated, and you can see the side that is uncoated, and you can see the difference in the hydrophobic properties of the coated side and the non-coated side. This is just a great way where I kind of talk about where, as a detailer, you kind of have to become a teacher. This is just a fantastic way to use a physical representation of what a ceramic coating will do with your customer because sometimes things like ceramic coatings in the detailing world, especially when the detailer is talking to, about it uh, with a customer, it can sound very ambiguous and kind of heady, and it doesn't really help the customer understand what it is or what they can expect with it. And when you do this, they have a very clear way to wrap their head around exactly what the coating is, what it does, and it just becomes a really powerful kind of sales technique. It's kind of like, you know, Billy Mays and the sham wow. It's like he pours Coke all over the carpet and then he, you know, of course, mops it up with the sham wow. It's like, it's kind of the same thing. It's not dishonest at all. It's just showing the person exactly what the coating is in real life, right? It's actually, I think, a, probably a very helpful thing. Um, and so, this is something that I would definitely encourage you guys to do. In this particular uh, video, just so you guys know, I am using G Techniques uh, Crystal Serum Light, and I am applying it outdoors. By the way, when we get to the after result here, of course, I got a ton of different shots of the after result of this truck. I actually had to take the after results um, when I only got finished with one side of the car and I still had the passenger side door and the door behind the passenger side uh, to do because the sun was going down and I wanted to make sure the lighting was right. So when you are looking at the after result here in just a minute or two in this video, that is uh, why the lighting is a little darker because I wanted to make sure I got those shots in of all of the ceramic coated pieces before the light actually went down. Now, by the way, guys, if you like the information that you're getting in this video, I'd really appreciate it if you smash the thumbs up button below this video because it does help this video rank in the YouTube algorithm so that if you think this is valuable information, if you hit the like button, because all this information is totally given out for free, it does help other detailers who might need the information to see this video and ultimately get the help they might need. Now, by the way, guys, even though we talked business this entire time, if you want to see a full organized list of the products and the tools that I used in this really long, all day, about 12-hour detail 
Actually, this one was a little less than that, actually. Uh, it wasn't quite as long, but it did take all day, maybe more like 11 hours. But if you guys want to see a totally organized list of the tools and products that I used all throughout this video because we didn't talk about it, check out the YouTube description box below. There will be Amazon links as well as links to uh, specific detailing sites that I use. Those are all affiliate links, by the way, so just understand that as well. And then apart from that, guys, if you're new to the Wilson Auto Detailing community and the Wilson Auto Detailing channel, but you like videos like this and you're starting your own detailing business and you're trying to get help at what this stuff looks like and how to get good information and really try to see where the good information is because at the end of the day, there's just a lot of information about detailing out there now and it didn't used to be that way. And so in some senses, that's helpful because there's a lot of info, but in some senses, it can kind of be hurtful because you don't know uh, which, which information to follow. So if you're looking for information, from somebody who actually built a detailing business um, and actually still continues to detail today uh, for a very select few uh, group of clientele and built a very specific type of detailing business built around maintenance clients and you like that idea, then hit the subscribe button because I teach exactly how to do those things and those strategies in this channel, in these videos that you're seeing now. And of course, you can tap the bell icon so that you get notified when I publish any future videos. Guys, thank you more than anything for sitting through this whole video. If you made it through, congrats. And as always from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, I trust that you guys will keep working hard and I will see you in the next video.